Good morning and welcome to St. John News. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song, The King Shall Come. Let us begin the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, today as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, we open our hearts to God's peace as we prepare to welcome the light of Christ into our lives and into our homes. The candles of this wreath remind us that Jesus Christ came to conquer the darkness of sin and to lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. Let us call upon his peace. May the candles of this wreath remind each one of us of the peace of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, so that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind. 
for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be the commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. And I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their palace without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and coming to her he said hail full of grace the Lord is with you but she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's world, many people seek fulfillment and happiness by doing their own thing. It's what I want that matters. They believe that happiness lies in having no commitments, no one to answer to, no one whose needs or problems will ever tie us down. It is, of course, good and necessary to find and do that which deep down we feel that we are called to do. However, human nature being what it is, we have to be on our guard. There can be a lot of selfishness in the do-your-own-thing approach. It often means taking the easiest path in the belief that this is where freedom and happiness lie. But this approach is more likely to lead to slavery and unhappiness. 
Here is an important truth. Freedom, happiness and fulfilment are more likely to be found in the acceptance of duty. However, for this to happen, a grim acceptance of duty is not good enough. It has to be a loving acceptance of duty. The more difficult the task to which we devote ourselves out of love, the more it will exalt us. In this, Mary gives us a great example. She didn't say to the angel, sorry, but I have my own plans. I want to do my own thing. Instead, she said, it's not what I want, but what God wants that matters. Let what God wants be done to me. Mary made a complete gift of herself to God and accepted the task that he gave her. Even though she didn't understand all the implications of it, she trusted that God would give her all the help that she needed. In effect, she was saying, I don't know what all this means, but I trust that good things will happen. She trusted so deeply in God that she was open to all possibilities. She gave up control over her future and let God define her life. As we know, life imposes a lot of duties on us. Besides duties to ourselves, there are duties to others and duties to God. Where would the world be if everyone just thought of themselves and insisted on doing their own thing, seeking their own freedom, happiness and fulfillment, independent of others and of God? Those who accept duty as Mary did may not find happiness and fulfillment in the eyes of the world, but they certainly will find it in the eyes of God, and deep down they will know it. The greatest grace in life is when what we have to do is what we want to do. And now as a community of faith, together let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Do not be afraid. As we prepare for the day of the Lord, we turn again to our God, whose love we acknowledge and who is faithful to his promises. For all believers, that we, like Mary, may ponder God's invitations and give our full yes to all that God asks of us, so that God's will may be fulfilled for all the human family. We pray. 
For the grace to be ready for Christmas, in these days before Christmas, may we enter more deeply into the hidden mysteries of God, praying for the gift of wisdom to live according to the gospel. We pray. For the grace for all who are isolated and alone, particularly those who are homebound or in nursing homes, that Christ may feel their emptiness and open our hearts to reach out to them. We pray. For all who are traveling, that God will protect them from harm and help them to have good and safe visits with family and friends. We pray. For a spirit of wonder and awe. Like Mary, may we be open to God's plan and be ready to accept God's will. In a spirit of obedience and wonder, we pray. For people who are ill and in need of healing. For our beloved dead, may our faithful loved ones now find home in the face of Christ, including Elvira Co, Lauren Baldarian, Aurora Vasquez, Alejandra Granado, Gail McKenzie, and Daisy Fajardo. We pray. For the intentions of this Mass, for the repose of the souls of Alice Joseph, John and Anna Gona, and for the special intentions of Virginia and Tony Cruz. We pray. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. United with Mary, Mother of God, and all the saints, we pray. God of the promises, lift up our hearts as we prepare for the birth of the Messiah. We commend our needs to you and the needs of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our table, please join us in singing Night of Silence.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial 
of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Eudes and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice for our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing our communion hymn, Christ the Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This weekend, Masses for Christmas Eve, which is today, are 4 p.m. for the Children's Mass with a drive-in option, 6 p.m. with Spanish Mass, and 11 p.m. for the Midnight Mass. Tomorrow on Christmas Day, Masses are 7, 9, and 11 a.m. in English and 1 p.m. in Spanish. Have a grand celebration with friends in the parish community on New Year's Eve, December 31st, from 7 a.m., 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. at Monsignor Grill Hall. Tickets are $80, and proceeds go towards our ministry on church environment. If you are interested in working with children and helping to bring our faith alive for them and their families, our Family Faith, faith Formation Program is looking for catechists. There's a training in January and we welcome anyone to please register. For details on these announcements, please see the bulletin or the website. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And as we go forth, please join us in singing Emmanuel. Until the sun